In a move that has left Democrats completely shocked, the acting defense secretary recently appointed by Trump has halted all transition briefings for the Joe Biden transition team. Now they're saying this is just routine. It's the holiday coming up and that many Pentagon workers were completely overwhelmed and we just needed to ease their load a little bit. Well, Biden's camp is saying not so fast. They did not agree to any suspension or halt and have been left totally stunned by this development. In fact, many senior officials in the Pentagon are confused as to why this is happening. Now, we can go by the official narrative, the one coming from Trump's campaign, and it's probably the safest bet. But you see, Trump supporters are looking for any way that Donald Trump can stay president and remain in office. A new story from BuzzFeed talks about many people on the ground in D.C., older folks saying civil war it is. No joke. BuzzFeed wrote this story. Don't look at me. It was BuzzFeed. But that's how much the Trump supporters want Trump to win. So if you look at what's happening right now, it may just be, look, the holidays are coming. I'll tell you this. I'm going to take a couple days off. We got a new year coming. It's Christmas. Everybody wants some time off. And that probably is the simple solution. But the Biden team is saying not so much. That doesn't make sense. We've got the, the biggest hack in U.S. history. They're saying Russia has been hacking us for nine months. And it's so bad that we don't even know how to solve the problem. They're saying we got to distribute this vaccine. You can't cut off these transition briefings. And then something else happened. This occurred last night. The order went out last night. This morning, we got word there was a briefing among many officials, administration officials, about the ongoing hack. And many members of Congress were, well, unenthused, to say the least, saying that they didn't get as much information as they were hoping for out of this. Of course, Trump supporters are insinuating maybe this is it. Is it possible that there's some confirmed foreign interference and this hack is somehow related to Joe Biden? My friends, a little too bold. Yeah, a lot of people are implying that may be the case and that the reason for halting these transition briefings is because there's going to be some moves made moving forward. They point out that the acting defense secretary was put in only, I think, I think a couple weeks ago, maybe about a month ago, and that this is seriously strange. I mean, Democrats don't find it to be normal at all and think they're being jammed up. Could it be the last temper tantrum of an outgoing administration? Possible, probably more possible, in my opinion, than Trump is planning on enacting some executive order from 2018. But Trump supporters are hoping for it and they're crossing their fingers. Well, I don't know if that's really what this is about and neither does anybody else. But we are, in fact, facing one of the biggest hacks in U.S. history and more information is coming out about it. And I think it's very interesting timing. While I don't think anybody should be drawing larger conclusions about this, you should know what's happening and what's going on around this decision. So let's read the news, see what Trump is doing, what Biden has said, and what's going on with this major hack, and why it is that BuzzFeed is talking to people who live in an alternate reality, they claim, who are advocating for civil war. No joke. Maybe something is on the horizon. Before we get started, head over to TimCast.com slash donate if you'd like to support my work. There are many ways you can give, but the best thing you can do, and most of you know this by now, share this video. If you think my presentation is rational and reasonable and this information benefits people, you can really help this channel and your fellow man by sharing this content across a variety of social media platforms. But also don't forget to like, subscribe, actually leave a comment too. Comment on your thoughts about all this at any point because that seriously helps as well. Let's read the news from Axios. Scoop. Pentagon halts Biden transition briefings. Acting Defense Secretary Chris Miller ordered a Pentagon wide halt to cooperation with the transition of President elect Biden. Shocking officials across the Defense Department, senior administration officials tell Axios the latest. Biden transition director Johannes Abraham contradicted the Pentagon's official response to the story on Friday afternoon, telling reporters, let me be clear. There was no mutually agreed upon holiday break. In fact, we think it's important that, that that briefings and other engagements continue during this period as there's no time to spare. And that's particularly true in the aftermath of ascertainment delay. Abraham continued, referring to the Trump administration's delay in recognizing Biden as president elect. Miller, defense secretary, had said in a statement following the publication of this story, quote, at no time has the department canceled or declined any interview. After the mutually agreed upon holiday, which begins tomorrow, 
We will continue with the transition and rescheduled meetings from today. So who do you believe? Listen, if they're claiming that they're going to re- have rescheduled meetings and they're going to resume after the holiday, I'm sorry, man. That's the simple answer. That's probably what's going to happen. Because if that wasn't true, then the statement itself was just false one way or another. But then it's also kind of weird. They're saying it's mutually agreed upon. And Joe Biden's like, nah, that's not true. Then I ask, what is the truth, Joe Biden? Well, I'd imagine if they were being cut out and they knew why, they'd say so. So I can only imagine what Miller is saying about the mutually agreed upon holiday is not true. Why would Biden lie about it? It makes no sense. Behind the scenes, Trump administration officials left open the possibility, uh, open the possibility cooperation would resume after a holiday pause. The officials were unsure what prompted Miller's actions or whether President Trump approved. Well, this is Trump's guy who was brought in. So in my opinion, I think Trump knows what's up. And I'll, and I'll, and I'll go back to the question I, I just asked. Why would Biden lie? And followed up with, why would Miller or Trump lie about this? Now, that has, in my opinion, a more simple answer. Because if they came out and said, we are stopping Joe Biden for non-holiday reasons, I think it could spark panic or outrage or fear. Listen, shutting things down because it's the holiday, nobody's going to care. I mean, that's, that's actually rather reasonable and likely. But if Biden didn't agree to it and is denying it, I don't see why they would lie about it. In that case, what's the other likely reason to shut down a transition with Joe Biden? First, simple solution. Trump's just jamming them up. Trump's not happy about what's going on, sure. But all this is going down while briefings are taking place around the biggest hack in U.S. history. Maybe there's something there. Maybe it's completely unrelated. I guess we'll have to wait and see. They say why it matters. Miller's move, which stunned officials throughout the Pentagon, was the biggest eruption yet of animus and mistrust toward the Biden team from the top level of the Trump administration. Fury at the Biden team among senior Pentagon officials escalated after the Washington Post published a story on Wednesday night revealing how much money would be saved if Biden halted construction of Trump's border wall. Trump officials blamed the leak on the Biden transition team, though it should be noted they have no evidence of this. And both reporters on the byline cover the Trump administration and have historically been prolific beneficiaries of leaks. So there's your simple answer, honestly, in the Axios story itself. The Biden transition team may be leaking things, maybe not. But if they are, why would the Trump camp want to continue the briefings? That's the most likely answer, in my opinion. They say meetings between President Trump's team and the Biden team are going on throughout the government after a delayed start as the administration dragged its feet on officially recognizing Biden as president elect. Then on Thursday night, Miller, who was appointed November 9th, so just over a month ago, when Trump fired Defense Secretary Mark Esper right after the election, ordered officials throughout the building to cancel scheduled transition meetings. A senior Defense Department official sought to downplay the move, calling it a simple delay of the last few scheduled meetings until after the new year. We had a fewer than two dozen remaining meetings on the schedule today and next week. The official said, adding the DOD staff working the meetings were overwhelmed by the number of meetings. These same senior leaders needed to do their day jobs and were being consumed by transition activities. With the holidays, we are taking a knee for two weeks. Oh, really? We are still committed to a productive transition. Perhaps. I see no reason why that isn't the case. But I don't think that makes sense. You know, we were overwhelmed because we have transitions all the time. And this seems to be abnormal with many people confused by what's going on. The Democrats kind of freaking out. OK, kind of freaking out. That's my opinion. But they express concern over the abrupt halt in cooperation with the Pentagon from the Hill. They say Pentagon, the Pentagon has said it was rescheduling meetings over a mutually agreed upon holiday season. This we understand. And then they show the quote we've already seen. So I think we get the gist of this. And I want to show you something else. Obviously, the Biden camp is upset they're being cut out of the transition process for now, and they're saying they didn't agree to it. We get it. But I saw this tweet from an NBC reporter, Alex NBC News, Alex Moe, saying all the members coming out of the briefing on the solar winds hack are expressing concern for the lack of details provided by the admin briefers. There was more in The New York Times than there was in that room. Rep. Thomas Massey said leaving classified briefing on the hack. Rep. Lynch Uh, says of the hack, it's very, very serious, obviously. And I don't think we have our arms around it yet in terms of potential impact. In another tweet, Alex Mo says, quote, 
There's a lot more that we don't know than we do know. Raskin says, leaving classified briefing for oversight Dems, Homeland Dems on SolarWinds hack. Newsweek reports, SolarWinds hack may be the tip of the iceberg. Evidence of multiple hacks found. Yikes, man. This may be the most substantive breach of U.S. security in U.S. history. Is it possible that something in this hack was uncovered? And just the night before this briefing, they shut down communication, the transition meetings with Joe Biden's team? Maybe. Still, like I said, bold assertion. And I'm bringing this up because I want to transition into the, the, the story from BuzzFeed talking about the parallel universes in the media. I think it goes without saying that there are many people looking at what just happened and they are saying straight up, boom, Trump is getting ready to cut out the Democrats, to cut out Joe Biden because he's compromised by China. Baby, it's coming. Well, I'm not going to make that assertion, but I'll talk about the gist of it. The SolarWinds hack, for for those that aren't familiar, is this enterprise level software. It was used by many different uh, uh, government agencies. And there was something called the Orion, uh, uh, you know, IT service or software. It was a specific program that SolarWinds has that there was a, uh, a supply chain hack. People thought they were downloading an update, but they were actually downloading what was essentially, we'll call it a virus, I guess, a backdoor. And this allowed nefarious actors to enter American systems and then embed themselves. This was just the door being cracked open. These, uh, uh, you know, malicious actors, whoever they may be, state, they say it's Russia. They may be so entrenched in our systems, we do not know how far this goes. And it could just be that. Right now, what we're seeing from mainstream media on the left is that it was Russia. Russia did this. They breached everything. And it is an act of war. Senator Dick Durbin says, Alleged Russian hack, virtually a declaration of war. Now, I don't trust it. I don't trust it. You know why? Because before Donald Trump got elected, Hillary Clinton was pushing buttons that were leading us into a war with Russia. You see, Russia is allied with Syria. The U.S. did not want Bashar al-Assad for a variety of reasons in power. There's also the natural gas pipeline they wanted to build. But we knew that the conflict in Syria was leading to a conflict with Russia. So they accused Trump of working with Russia. And he jams up all of the American efforts to get that pipeline and remove uh, uh, Assad. America really did not want Assad in there. Trump also brought in General Flynn, who, it's my understanding, essentially blew the whistle on the Obama administration arming rebel groups. All of this would have led to Assad being removed and conflict with Russia. Maybe not the intent but we were heading that direction. If you don't, if if many of you may not be familiar, but for those that do, Ukraine, Crimea, Russia essentially annexed Crimea. Some say by force, some say through a referendum. Sure. And it led to a a major break from the Eastern, from Eastern Ukraine to Ukraine. Now this is relevant because Western forces and powers were trying to get Ukraine on their side. It has a lot to do with the conflict with Russia. Now we're back to this hack and they're saying this hack must be Russia. How do you prove to the American people the hack was Russia? You can't. They'll just say it over and over again. That's why I'm not so sure. I don't, I, they say Russia did it. I don't know what I'll say. Maybe it was China, Iran, or whatever. I don't know also if it has anything to do with Biden's transition briefings being cut off. But maybe this wasn't Russia. We don't know. Or more importantly, what if Trump comes out and says this was, in fact, China? More importantly, what happens when Director of National Intelligence Ratcliffe comes out and says there was foreign interference, which he did? There absolutely is some very slim possibility that Trump is cutting out Joe Biden's transition briefings because they're concerned Biden may be compromised. I don't think that's far fetched nor conspiratorial. We're getting official reporting from Politico and all these other outlets that Hunter Biden was expecting payment from China. He did fly on Air Force Two with Joe Biden to China, and now he's under serious scrutiny. Many people are saying we need a special prosecutor to continue investigating Hunter Biden. And as many people can probably figure out, do you think Joe Biden was just oblivious to what his son was doing? Come on. We know how the game is played. Some people have pointed out a a very simple way to prove whether or not Joe Biden was actually in on the take. 
And I think we actually have some evidence in the leaked emails from the Hunter Biden laptop where, you know, his family was talking to Hunter about what bills to pay. Now, I don't know about all that. I don't got got that pulled up. So fact check me on that one. But what, what they're basically saying is, look at Joe Biden's expenses. If routine things around his house and through his family were paid for by Hunter, then you know how the game is being played. Joe Biden's in office. He cuts crony deals. His son is the one who takes the money. And as we saw from those emails confirmed by Tony Bobulinski, a confidant of the Biden family who came out and blew the whistle, 10 percent would be held for the big guy by Hunter. The accusation being, well, I should say not even the accusation, what we got confirmed by Tony Bobulinski was that Hunter Biden was negotiating a deal where he would have the equity, but it was really for Joe. Maybe that's why Joe Biden is now being cut out. Maybe he's compromised. Maybe these leaks are more than just leaks to the public. Now, I, I'm not going to speculate. I'm not going to tell you what I know, what, you know, that I know things I don't. This really could just be Trump saying, ah, Joe Biden, yeah, I'm so mad I lost. Don't do any more meetings with him. It could be that simple. And honestly, I don't think it's that far fetched. Trump being like, you know what? I don't care. I can do what I want. No more meetings with Biden because he can. Why not? Maybe. Or maybe there's something else going on. I know a lot of Trump supporters want to believe it. We got this story from Newsweek as well. U.S.-China conflict would be a disaster for whole world, Beijing warns. Well, then stop jamming us up and taking away our manufacturing and all these other things. Back off, China. China's not just interfering in the U.S. It's their Thousand Talents program. It's a, it's a bunch of other things. It's buying, of pro- buying up property, a lot of legal things. China isn't just, you know, doing, playing these games in the U.S., They're buying up land across the world in Africa and South America. They're doing oil exploration down there as well. They were trying to build for a period the Nicaraguan Canal to compete with the Panama Canal. And there's something called Thucydides Trap, which suggests conflict between U.S. and China is inevitable. Maybe it's not. Now, you know what? I'll tell you this. China's not wrong. Conflict between the U.S. and China would be a disaster for the whole world. But what do we do? Do we sit back, lay down and just say, have at it? No, we've got two different worldviews. Now, China's massive, you know, 1.3, 1.4 billion people in the U.S., 330 million people. But the U.S. has wealth, power and military strength. So it could be a potential disaster. But I tell you this, you can have the best weapons in the world. The most powerful thing is just people. If China is able to, you know, if war does break out for whatever reason, they got the people, man. That matters. It does. But I don't think that's where we're headed. Whatever civil conflict we end up seeing, I think it's going to be fifth generational warfare. This is the story we're getting for BuzzFeed News, and I'll tie this all together. I bring this up because people are looking at the action taken by the Trump administration right now by his Pentagon defense secretary cutting out Biden as another step in the process by which Trump retains power. Some have suggested Trump will become a shadow president, that his supporters will stay by his side, period. No matter what happens, no matter what Joe Biden says, there is no official anymore. Interestingly, uh, Rosie Gray doesn't seem to truly understand these universes. There are two. Axios said he, uh, the CEO of Axios said he fears there'll be a decoupling of these two universes. And that's exactly what these people are actually asking for. They're saying, why don't the blue states get to keep Joe Biden as their president and the red states will have Donald Trump as their president? I mean, yeah, why not? (laughs) It is an interesting question. And then y'all can negotiate between each other and see how things work out, I guess. But I do find it fascinating. Uh, I do know Rosie Gray. haven't seen her in a long time. But it's interesting to me how these journalists really don't understand what conservatives are doing or what they're thinking. Yet conservatives know what the left is doing and what they're thinking. It's kind of like a one way system, huh? For BuzzFeed, Rosie Gray writes, in this universe, Joe Biden has been declared the winner of the election many times and in many different ways. He won the popular vote by more than seven million ballots. President Donald Trump's flurry of legal challenges failed, culminating in the Supreme Court's rejection on December 11th of a Texas lawsuit challenging the results in seven states. On Monday, in what is nearly the final step in certifying the winner of the presidential election, 306 electors cast their votes for Biden in keeping with their state's results, ensuring that it'll be the former vice president who was inaugurated as the 46th president on January 20th. In that universe, absolutely. But I will add uh, to Rosie's article, Trump's legal challenges never stopped. And most of the failures weren't from the Trump campaign. They were from other people who supported the president or Republicans that may have, you know, passively had some benefit for Trump. 
Trump certainly still has legal challenges pending. So it isn't over. And January 6 is still several weeks away, and that's when they'll actually count the votes. A lot could happen between now and then. She writes, that's just this universe. In a parallel universe, the idea that Biden won is not only false, but impossible. And the notion that he will be sworn in next month is still very much in doubt, if not outright laughable. Trump's lawyers are not bumblers engaged in a hapless quest, but heroes fighting to save the republic. The election was stolen in a grand conspiracy involving everyone from Fox News's election desk to the solidly conservative governor of Georgia. Even the electoral college vote is itself a sham, they say, and Trump's alternate electors should be counted instead. You know, let me tell you, a little hyperbolic, but not completely wrong. I mean, many Trump supporters no longer watch Fox News. Their ratings took a took a huge hit. People are cheering on Sidney Powell, even though her lawsuits riddled with typos and, you know, sp- spelling errors and weird space gap, like missing space buttons. I don't know. The words just jumbled together. And I think Sidney Powell and Lynn Wood have actually hurt Donald Trump's chance at challenging the election because Trump needs legitimacy. But in the end, I think one thing Rosie brings up, it doesn't matter. You know, the, the way she describes it, it really doesn't matter. Does anyone who supports Trump, you know, devout supporters of Trump care what the left thinks or says? No. Do they care about the Electoral College? No. They're going to follow Trump. Rosie mentions she went, uh, you know, thousands of people flocked to D.C. She says, walking down Pennsylvania, I caught up with Robin Bonner, 62 from Kansas. As she made her way down the street near a rally in Freedom Plaza hosted by the group Women for America First. Bonner held a pro, uh, pro-police thin blue line flagged. She says, I asked Bonner how she felt about Biden being sworn in. He won't be. I'm sure about that, she responded without hesitation. How can it be prevented? We will dismantle the government, she said. I asked if she meant civil conflict. Quote, if it has to be, she said. Uh, if it has to be, she said, though she hoped not. Instead, she said she'd prefer a peaceful secession. Quote, maybe we can go to the Supreme Court and get the blue states disconnected from the red states and have our own president. I don't know why we can't just kick out the blue states. They don't want Trump. They don't want the Constitution and they don't want our freedoms. So why shouldn't we just let them go? And then we'll have all the red states. (laughs) Honestly, it's a good question. If people in West Virginia want to have a bunch of guns and just go hold two full auto and fire them off like crazy, why not let them? If people in New York City don't want to do that, then okay, then don't. People live very different ways, and we're coming to a problem where there's, there's fundamental differences in how they want to live. Now, there are some really good reasons, in my opinion, for not breaking apart. I mean, the economy, the ease of travel, and I think there's really good reasons why the Supreme Court can rule over all of the country. There have been many Supreme Court rulings which have greatly benefited this country. Obviously, civil rights I think uh, loving v. Virginia and gay marriage, I think it's been good. The Supreme Court has been able to say this is what the Constitution says. But this is different now. The Constitution also says you have the right to bear arms. More importantly, that it shall not be infringed, shall not be infringed, say all of the ardent 2A supporters. Yet it is being infringed. If the idea is the Supreme Court will interpret and uphold the Constitution, that's not happening today. We have Democrats in blue cities with by by edict shutting down businesses and destroying lives. So maybe it does make sense if the Democrats want to suppress and oppress their people and the people who live there don't care. Far be it from me to interfere. But there's a bigger and better question then to this woman and those who would say, let them have their president. Do the people in New York really want to be crushed under the boot of Cuomo? Probably not. So it's an interesting predicament then. The Constitution has been set ablaze figuratively in places like New York and California and Michigan and Pennsylvania and Illinois. Should the U.S. government sit back and say these jurisdictions are allowed to destroy the constitutional rights of their citizens? Or is it incumbent upon the federal government to make sure the states are abiding by the Constitution? And what happens if they don't? It's a cop out to say we should just break apart. Why? The Constitution is for all states. Do we sit back and let Cuomo rip it to shreds? Apparently so, because the best the political will of the right has to muster, has to offer is let's just walk away. Sure, so be it. Maybe you want to live in peace. I think that's the best thing the Democrats could hope for. 
because the alternative is Trump invokes some kind of martial law or whatever to send in military to enforce the upholding of the Constitution. Right now, you've got the left saying, oh, no, General Flynn and people on the right have called for martial law. State senator in Virginia and North Carolina have both said martial law. Politico says Republicans don't understand what the Insurrection Act is. MAGA leaders call for the troops to keep Trump in office. Okay, if you were going to tell me Trump can't invoke the Insurrection Act or declare martial law or anything like that, yet at the same time in these states, you have people just blatantly violating actual statutory law and the Constitution. Tell me again why I care about what you think is legal. If you can violate the Constitution, then there must not be one. If the Democratic governors in these states don't care when they pass, you know, Cuomo just banned hate symbols in violation of the First Amendment, barring people from going to churches, violating the First Amendment, he's ripping it to shreds. Why would it make a difference then if Trump declared martial law? What does legality have to do with it? Y'all have already broke the law. More importantly, if civil, li- civil liberties have already been suppressed, repressed, and people are being oppressed, then the only thing that can come from Donald Trump's martial law is people getting their rights back. Because if he just takes the, if he just maintains the removal of people's rights, then nothing changed, did it? So I'm not saying it's the right thing. And I'm not saying it's a good thing. I'm just pointing out, maybe Donald Trump is shutting down Joe Biden for this reason. Maybe it's just wishful thinking from these Trump supporters. I got to say, I do not believe that Donald Trump has the political willpower to do anything like that. And the simple solution here as to why Trump shut down the Biden transition briefings is because Trump is giving a one last big middle finger to the Democratic establishment and other establishment politics in the mainstream media. That's about it. I don't think there's some grand scheme or grand conspiracy. And I think at the very least, you can say they're probably lying about why they're shutting things down. If someone told me to make a bet and I had no choice, I'd bet that Trump is just jamming up Biden on the way out. But I do think there's a better probability that Trump has actionable intelligence from these hacks from Ratcliffe, the the director of national intelligence, suggesting there's something going on with the Biden family. Because Tony Bobulinski, a former confidant, said the Bidens are compromised by China. And if that's true, then Trump is obligated to stop them from taking the presidency, isn't he? If they're going to say, make these claims and assert them as fact, wouldn't any rational person say we can't allow it? Now, here's where the two universes come in, like BuzzFeed reported. It doesn't matter what the left thinks. The left doesn't care that Hunter Biden was in Ukraine making money or that he was flown to China. They don't care. The rest of us are deeply concerned by it. So what happens? Do you roll back and say, I refuse to be involved, refuse to fight, and I'll just run away? Sounds like that's where Trump supporters are at. Let the red states leave, they say. Give the blue states to the Democrats or to China. If that's your opinion on what's going on with Joe Biden, you 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 must consider if you think Joe Biden is compromised by China, then Trump must save and preserve this this union before it falls apart. It's not so simple, is it? There's no real answers. You don't know what the truth is. Nobody does. Is Trump actually the despot dictator they say he is? Clearly not, because he's not doing these things and he never has. In the end, Trump supporters, the best thing they've ever put together, the best thing they've mustered is peaceful divorce. Let's break the country apart. That is not Abraham Lincoln at all. Not at all. That guy kind of went nuts, huh? Suspending constitutional rights the way the Democrats are. Trump's not doing that. So in the end, I'll tell you what I think is going to happen. I think Joe Biden will become president. I think most conservatives are going to say, well, you know, better luck next time. We'll keep campaigning. Proud boys will get angry and they'll march and they'll yell. And then in the end, I think we will have Joe Biden, who I personally believe is compromised by China, and uh, he'll be the president. I don't know what the other view of this is. There's no great organization of right wing individuals. Trump doesn't have even strong support from conservatives like Geraldo is saying, give up. It's over. Trump supporters are saying no. But is that enough? Is it even right? In the end, maybe there's no great threat in Joe Biden's the bumbling old man who won the presidency. Or maybe he is an old crony who used his office to prop himself up and is compromised by China. When they accuse Trump of being a Russian asset, they did not have the political willpower to go beyond that, but they did get a special prosecutor. 
At the very least, you think Trump could do that, right? A special prosecutor investigating the Biden family, not just Hunter Biden on the way out. If he doesn't do anything, it just proves conservatives have no political willpower. Now, Trump supporters, I think, do. But is that it we get from BuzzFeed, these women saying, let's just secede, let's break apart? That's not very strong political willpower, but hey, it's better than nothing. I'm not saying it's, it's right to break up the country. I'm saying at least there is some willpower there. It remains to be seen. But in the meantime, Joe Biden getting cut off. We'll see what it means in the long run. I'll leave it there. Next segment's coming up tonight at 8 p.m. YouTube.com slash Timcast IRL. We're hoping these special guests can make it. There was recently a blizzard and things are getting, you know, kind of jammed up on our end. But this could be a really big show about the China, about China, about their culture, about what they're doing, about war and infiltration. This is going to be a, a pretty substantive episode. So make sure you check it out. YouTube.com slash Timcast IRL. Thanks for hanging out. And I will see you all at 8 p.m. live tonight. <laughs>